What can you say about this man? Well, for starters, he's 94. Yet he comes to his office each working day to read the paper, he says. He's not one for the limelight, and he does a nice line in self-deprecation. All Australian type paintings, nothing very special about any of them. Lloyd Stanley Perrin would be the first to say his early days were not lived in designer surroundings like this. We lived in a, a gold mine out of Laverton and uh, we used to live in a, a shack with hessian walls and no floor, no power, no electricity. And I thought, when I grow up, I want to do better than that. When I was 11, I went there, and uh, there was no school. The school only went to six to end it. And uh, prior to that, uh, I used to, uh, at school at Carlisle, I learned to do fretwork. So I used to make handkerchief boxes and little things and sell them to, to the miners. Stan Perrin left school at 14 and started work for the equivalent of $1.50 a week. This was Kalgoorlie, his growing years, and grow he did. Well, I got on top of it. I had taxis first, then I went into earth moving, and uh, I was sold out in 1961. And I finished up with a million and a half dollars from nothing, and in 12 years, I and uh, that gave me a bank and I started buying property and just progressed on. Do you like making money? Yes, it's like playing Monopoly. I enjoy playing Monopoly and it's exactly what we do today. The results of Stan Perrin's Monopoly wins are evidenced in the BRW Rich List. But there's another parent activity that gets much less attention. We have no shareholders. It's a family business and uh, no outside people involved at all. And the family take a share of the profits and a share of the profits go to charity. So you make money and you feel that you should share it and give it away? Is that, is that your philosophy? Yes. Giving away money is the job of Perrin's charitable foundation. But this publication, from three decades ago, reveals Stan Perrin's bond with Western Australia's pioneering neuroscientists. I've watched Byron Kukulis from day one, since he first started, and he spent his whole life trying to find a cure for muscular dystrophy, which you must admire him for that. Nobody else has spent as much time and effort as he has. And then um, Steve Wilton came along and I've watched him work in the laboratory there for years. And I've gone to their meetings three or four times a year. I think it's wonderful to see somebody that's at least made some advance because they spend years devote a lot of time to things and uh, they don't always get a result. But at least Steve Wilton has got a result that appears to be quite a thing as far as I can see. So, given what we now know about Stan Perrin, why on earth is he in front of a camera? Well, that's simple. He's doing it for the neuroscientists. It's his way of supporting their groundbreaking research. What was the Western Australian Neuroscience Research Institute has a new name. His name. They said my name would help to raise funds. And that's the only reason that I agreed to it.
is that the end of it for you or do you plan to keep closely associated with that institute and follow it? Well, I've followed it for the last 30 years, so I suppose I'll follow it further. 